science explorers. Carrie here from Ghost STEM. I'm just finishing putting up some fencing in my garden for the cucumbers. It's hard work, but you know, it's nothing compared to what those interns, Sam, Kylie, and Sarah were doing for Baker Resources Coalition. You know, it was so neat to see their progress on the projects they were working on. They work really hard moving rock and digging holes and pounding fence posts. You know, they mentioned one of their goals for their work was to increase biodiversity. Now that's not a word that we hear every day. So what might that word mean? Well, let's find out. If we break down the word into its parts, you have the part bio and you have the part diversity. So when you hear the part bio, what comes to mind for you and what are you reminded of? Then when you hear the part diversity, what do you think of then? What kinds of things come to mind? And then what might it mean when you put the parts together? Consider pausing the video right now and think for a bit and write down some of your ideas. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just about exploring what comes to mind, what you already know about those words. And if you're in a class, you might want to take some time to discuss as a group. Either way, be prepared to share your thoughts. On their own, bio means life and diversity means a variety or differences. I'm guessing you had some similar ideas as you thought about these words. Put together, biodiversity means the variety of life in a particular place. All organisms in a habitat are interconnected, and because of that, high biodiversity or lots of biodiversity allows habitats to handle stresses more easily. Like where the interns were working, some of the stresses there were things like fire, insects, and flooding. Other stresses on a habitat include invasive organisms that can take over and habitat loss due to human activities. To measure the health of habitats, scientists often measure the biodiversity. One way to measure diversity is something called species richness which is the number of different species living in a particular area. For this discovery challenge, Biodiversity Breakdown, we're going to investigate biodiversity in our neighborhoods. So we're gonna do that by measuring species richness in two different places. So think about two different habitats near you. I'm gonna choose a lawn and a nearby stream bank. You'll need paper, pencil, a clipboard, string or yarn, and a ruler and some scissors. To measure species richness, we're going to create a sampling tool. Now, our tools are gonna to be really simple. Just some string, and we're gonna take that string and form it into the shape of a circle. The one thing is, our circles need to be one half meter in diameter or 0.5 meters diameter. If that word diameter is new to you, a diameter is the length from one side of a circle to the other side, passing through its center. To create a half meter diameter circle, you're gonna cut your string 1.57 meters long, or for easy measuring, five ruler lengths plus seven centimeters. With the same size circles, we'll be able to compare our species richness measurements with each other. Put in scientific terms, we're gonna collect our data in a standardized way. If you're curious how I calculated 1.57 meters, that's how long this string is, for the length of our string for our sampling tools, 
go ahead and check out, we have a video called the Super Circumference Story. It's in the description of this video. On your paper, you'll make a T-chart. On one side will be site one. For me, that will be lawn. The other side will be site two. And for me, that will be stream bank. You'll sample species richness three times at each site. Head to your site one. You'll make a circle with your string and observe what you see inside the string. In the table on your paper, sketch each organism very simply and label it. You don't need to know what the names of things are. Like I wrote white for the white flower in my sample. The sketches and labels are only for you to be sure you don't count species twice at one site. And we will assume that if organisms look different, they are different species. And once you've recorded each species in your circle, you are done with your first sample. Find another spot at your first site to take a second sample. Form a circle with your string and observe closely. This time, only record new organisms you didn't find in your first sample. That way you don't record the same species twice. Once you have recorded everything in the second sample, Take your third and final sample at site one. Then you'll follow that same process at site two. Once you've taken three samples from each site, you're gonna draw a line under your last species. And you'll write species richness off to the side. And count the total number of species you recorded for each site. So for my site one, my species richness was eight. And for my site two, the stream bank, my species richness was six. Now to compare these two numbers, I have evidence the biodiversity in my lawn is higher than the stream bank. Now I only took three samples. If I took more samples from each site, my data might more accurately describe the species richness or the biodiversity at each site. Now, if you're doing these activities in a class, another cool option with the help of your teachers is to add your data with your classmates' data. This gives you a lot more samples. And you can also do things like find the average species richness with the data from your entire class. Or another option is that you go and you sample more sites. Lastly, another fun extension would be to create a field guide with all of the organisms that you found at your site, maybe like your schoolyard. With a little research, you could find out a whole lot of information about the biodiversity in your habitat. As we wrap up this discovery challenge, biodiversity breakdown. I hope you had fun learning about biodiversity and also understand that the more biodiversity a habitat has, the more it's able to handle stresses like floods and fires. And I also hope that you know a little bit more about the species richness of your neighborhood. Well, this fence isn't going to put itself up and the sun's going down, so I'm going to get to work. Until next time, keep exploring.